Hi guys, um, Weinkake is in Berlin. Um, next to me is Andrew Connor, the sommelier of the house at uh, Fisher's Fritz. Uh, two Michelin stars, good, uh, good wine, good cuisine. Hope so. I think so. Yeah, two Michelin stars. In, <laughs> okay. In the Regent Hotel. Okay. In the Regent Hotel. So uh, why we speak English is, um, of course. Um, uh, we can speak. Uh, we talk. Uh, can talk in German. But actually, you are from New Zealand. And the first question, of course, I have to ask you: Why a kiwi? What does a kiwi do in Berlin? My, uh, it's a good question. Thank you for asking. <laughs> okay. Nice, nice to have you here. Um, <laughs> okay. Thank my you. wife is my wife is German. I uh, I worked a long time in London for 14 years, and I met my wife, who's from Berlin. And when our first son was born, who's now four. We said London's no place for kids, and I think anyone who's been to London knows it. Great city, though. And uh, we okay. moved to Berlin. Cool city for kids. Okay. L different lifestyle, more relaxed. Okay. And cool. Yeah. And, um, yeah, your lifestyle as well is getting into these walls, let's say. Um, do you have any... Um, or you brought some bottles of New Zealand wine into the wine cart over here? Yeah, when I, when I started, there were no... There was... No New Zealand wine on the list, and of course, I'm proud of my country. I want to I wanna have a good representation of New Zealand wine here. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's been a struggle. I won't deny it. In, in England is a, the major export market for the, for the New Zealand wine industry, and you can get everything. Okay. Um, and in Germany, it's very fragmented, and a lot of the wine I want to have, I just can't get. I've done my best. I got okay. together a nice little, nice little list. I have 12 references in, out of 350, so it's, it's a decent amount. Okay. But it's always a sideshow. Okay. Our main focus here is German wine. Okay, German wine. Actually, why you would like to discover German wines, or, or let's say to offer um, the people German wines? I think like everybody in the wine trade, I hope everybody, I really love Riesling. I think okay. it's the greatest yeah. white grape variety. Okay. It's the, it's the uh, great ambassador for the soil. It conveys okay. nuances of the terroir. Um, but we're, uh, we're uh, um, one of the top restaurants in the, the capital city of Germany. Okay. And we have a lot of international visitors. All right. And I think there's a lot of misconceptions about German wine, especially in the English-speaking world. I can't tell you the number of times they all say, oh, it's, I, I don't want a Riesling, it's going to be sweet. And okay. I, I want to... Okay. I wanna, Open people's minds because okay. there's Ambassador great ones there. For Riesling. Yeah. Okay. We're a Damn. shop window. <laughs> okay, that means we have a Riesling inside? No. Or? No. Okay. So we're in Blanc from Marlborough. All right. So hometown is uh, catching us. This is a good, it's a good example of the problems that I have uh, finding the New Zealand wine that I want. It's a okay. winery I, I know very well. This is Marima from Saracen, 2013. Right. It's from, from Marlborough, which is the key Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, Growing area in New Zealand, the largest area for Sauvignon Blanc production. Biodynamic, and this wine is wild fermented and aged in barrique, so it's not your typical uh, gooseberry, gooseberry and uh, passion okay. fruit uh, okay. kind of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. It's a little bit, it's a little bit different. All right. Um, and I wanted this on the list. Okay. And uh, they got an importer, and I put it on the list. I have it by the glass. Okay. And then they. Decided not to work with the importer anymore, so okay. the importer has ten cases left. Okay, I take them all, so but uh, it. it's gonna it's okay. gonna go, and then I'm gonna be back to square one. All and right, it's, it's it's the problem. Okay. A lot of people a lot of people struggle to find an importer. All right, uh, um, so what do you feel? What do you think? I, th I think for one thing, you still have the sort of exotic fruit that I associate yeah. with Sauvignon Blanc, but here I think more pineapple, maybe some peach, a lot of uh, elderflower. Yeah. There's this funky, spontaneous nose, yeah. you know, a little bit wild, a little bit smoky. All right. It's great. Yeah, it is indeed, actually. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good uh, example how you can work in New Zealand and uh, how to elaborate a wine like this, no? Yeah, I think the, the, the stylistically, the producers of Sauvignon Blanc are polarizing a little yeah, bit into exactly. people that are doing very commercial wines, yeah. too much residual sugar, yeah. too high cropping, and people that are doing a little bit funkier, more experimental stuff. Okay. These guys, are Dog Point, Cloudy Bay, do a similar cuvee called De Coco, which I totally recommend. All right, yeah. great. Cool. Um, let's come to the second one. Is it right or red one? It's red. It's this red. Is Syrah. Okay. Syrah. I, like, I like Syrah as okay. a great variety. And uh, stuff from New Zealand also very good. But this okay. one is from Hungary. Hungary. It's from Schopron. Okay. Um, it's in the far, far west of Hungary. The, the, wine, uh, the winemaker is Austrian. Franz Wieniger, the family winery, is in Middelburgenland, a little bit south of the Neuseelersee. 
uh, near Deutschkreuz. And if you look on the map, Hungary makes a quarter. This is this is west, and this is east. There's a kind of whew, like this. There's a little hump where the, the Hungary sort of sort of reaches into Austria. Um, historically, Hungary and Austria were part of one country, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And Franz's grandfather bought the the vineyard, it's, and it's. Um, yeah, I think it's really interesting. It's not really part of the mainstream of Hungarian winemaking, but yeah. I think very interesting. A lot okay. of uh, gneiss and uh, mica in the soil. Okay. Very earthy okay. and spicy. Yeah. I think a little bit so like yeah. you know when you walk if you're if you're somewhere where there's a lot of clay in the soil on a summer's day when you walk down a, an unsealed road there's this kind of almost metallic yeah. dusty kind yeah. of smell. I think it's like that. Blood, I think, okay. is also a good call. Sort yeah. of iron in the soil. Yeah. Okay, great. Which, for example, which pair really short and what do you recommend? For food. For food, yeah. white and red. This one I do with, um, we have cod with uh, washed vegetables. So we have a kind of a dill, cabbage salad and, and beetroot and um, turnip and carrot and a, um, and a coriander sauce. Okay. I think it's very nicely. And this one, we have pigeon that comes with... Um, uh, Silver beet stuffed with salted celeriac and a, a kind of emulsified uh, walnut olive celery sauce. Okay. I do the red. Thing. Great. Nice. That's a great uh, match. Cool. Thanks a lot. It's a um, yeah, if you want to have this food and wine experience, and as well the uh, fantastic Andrew uh, to experience uh, himself, then uh, just pass by. Actually, every year you do a kitchen party. It's nearly to November, I guess. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. So maybe it's a good opportunity to pass by. It's a lot of fun. We have, uh, we have wineries come. They present their okay. wine. We have little cooking stations. There's, okay. uh, there's, uh, normally there's a different theme every year, and we have uh, guest chefs. Okay. Fun. So good networking, good food. So what do you want more? Okay. Stay tuned. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Andrew. So, and, of course, cheers. Yeah. Cheers. cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.